What's going on guys, it's Bear, and today I bring you guys another tutorial, and I'm sound pretty tired right now, it's 1.45am, and I've been doing my project lately, it's like the waiting for the last minute literally to do this, and I only have 4 hours till school, so I have 2 more projects to cram in, so I thought I can do this to take a break and just get my mind kind of set straight again. So, we're going to be learning on how to do this warp kind of, warp, cool looking thing, I guess, I don't know what to name it, but uh, if you guys want to buy this Lightroom, it's a dollar on my cell phone. It's my isometric Lightroom, and I just changed the view from isometric to perspective. So yeah. Uh, before I get the video going, make sure to leave a comment for a question for me for my 2K q and I'll be doing it for the, this video, my last video, and the next video, and then I'll just take all the questions and then throw them in the video together. So go just leave a question in the comments below, and you guys can be in the next video. So to get this started, I'm just going to delete everything. And then click my mode text and just put in my text. And you guys can do this for your logo, mode text, you can do it for pretty much anything. And then put that to middle. So for depth, I'm just going to throw this onto like 100. Because can't go wrong. I feel like someone's in my house right now, it's kind of weird. Alright, and then you can just take your horizontal spacing and bring it a little closer. And vertical spacing can go down a little bit. So it's like that. And this font is Sega Logo font. If you guys want to download that, just throw the depth up. So to get this going, I'm just going to throw a random on it. So what you're going to want to do is click your Motex or your object and go hold Alt Render, not Render, hold Alt MoGraph Effector Random. And this doesn't work obviously for a logo unless it has more than one piece. So what I'm going to do is just throw this on to like 14, 20, and then click Rotation. And then I'm going to drag this up, drag that down, and then I'll drag this up. And then you can just mess with these, really. If you guys want a more in-depth tutorial on this, just please let me know. You can click scale and change the way some stuff looks. I'll throw a color on my thing real quick. I'll screw it. So if you just render that, obviously, it's just a little displaced. And you guys can do that letter by letter if you click your mode text and hold C. And then it just brings down your little null thing. But to get into the real tutorial about the warp thing. So warping an object is just like... I was saying you guys know what warping is. It's like a bending of a material or object. But um, to like warp something, you have to use a tool. And if you go here, it's like a bend. And you can add like bend objects. So they have bend, twist, melt, correction, jiggle all this kind of stuff and then right here in the third column they have wrap so you're just gonna click wrap and you're gonna see these kind of purplish blue outlines pop up in like a circle formation but they're not gonna do anything so don't mess with these yet so what you're gonna do is just click it and drag it and make it like a child of the Motex so you're just gonna drag it and drop it on so it just goes there and now you can see the object is bent so if I just render that now you can clearly see that it's being bent around obviously nothing but in this case something So. You can just change all the settings you want. You can go here and you can change the width of its bent. The height doesn't really do anything for mine since I have Motex. And then the radius obviously makes it smaller like that. Makes it bigger. And then you got the latitude start. So if you bring up the latitude start and then the latitude end, so the 212, 376, it's going to go like this and you can't really see it. So you're just going to click this arrow and just kind of drag it and recenter it. And you got to do this a couple of times. I'm also not center with my screen. So you have that. And then you can really just do whatever you kind of want. You can mess with the scale for the Z, mess with the tension. So you bring down the tension, you can just recenter it. And then you can have your radius, everyone over that. But now, right here it says wrap, and there's a box, and it says uh, cylinder. No, it doesn't. I don't really care. But um, if you click that, and it can drops down a box that says spherical. So if you click that, it makes it an actual circle. And then you can just really mess with everything. You can change your Motex. So, if you click it, then these two things pop down. It's called latitude start and latitude end. And this really makes it a circle. 
So if you mess with the latitude start and end, I'd mess with the latitude start and end in this as well. Before you look like a really warped thing. And then you can just mess with everything. So let me just fix this really quick. So, it just warps it. And then you can click the render preview button and it's going to render it. And you're going to easily tell that it's being warped around something. And this is really good for using for like uh, some banners. Uh, I know people use it to wrap it around like circles or objects. And it's really easy to do and you guys can have a lot of freedom with it. And it's not hard to do. And it takes obviously not long. It takes like 5 minutes to do. So it's not that hard to do and you have a lot of freedom. And there's other tools in here. As I said like the spline wrap, surface jiggle. All this kind of stuff. And... If you guys want more tutorials on that, please let me know. But uh, this is about it. This is just really easy to warp stuff. You just gotta make it a child of your Motex or object or null, whatever you're using. Because if you don't, then it gets all screwed up. Because yeah, I'll show you. If you make your child or your Motex with the child of the wrap, obviously nothing happens. But if you flip it around, then it goes to where it was. But yeah, that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you guys for 2K. And as I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to be a part of my 2K like Q&A, just uh, write down a question in the comments below. Excuse me. Write down a question in the comments below. And uh, you'll probably be featured in my 2K Q&A. So that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Just make sure to like and comment. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.